in this uh, class we will discuss uh, the dynamics of pure rotation now what i mean by pure rotation is the axis of rotation is at rest okay so this term pure rotation is axis of rotation is at rest an example is uh, a, 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 the, the rotation of a door on its hinges okay the axis is uh, at rest this is different from uh, this is a special case of fixed axis rotation because in fixed axis rotation the word fixed doesn't mean that the axis of rotation is at rest okay fixed only means that the direction of the axis of rotation is always um, same fixed and we take it as uh, z direction right uh, but in fixed axis rotation it is possible that the axis of rotation can undergo translation uh, like the 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 axle of a of the wheel of a motor vehicle it is which is going in a straight line we consider a motor vehicle going in a straight line then the axle of the wheel uh, the wheel is rotating about its axis and the direction of this axle is the same okay uh, so it's a fixed axis rotation but the axle itself axis itself is undergoing translation along a straight line so that is a uh, fixed axis rotation but in fixed axis rotation consider this special case of fixed axis rotation where uh, the axis of rotation is at rest okay so that is called um, pure rotation so here uh, the direction of the axis is fixed it's a fixed axis rotation at the same time there is no translation for the axis so that is the example a, a door turning on its hinges okay or uh, the turning of a water wheel okay these are examples of um, this pure rotation okay so let us um, write down the basic uh, equation of motion for uh, pure rotation uh, so let us assume that our axis of rotation is uh, along the z axis so we can write uh, the z component of angular momentum is equal to i omega so the body is revolving around the z axis with an angular velocity omega so the angular momentum along the z direction um, the z component of angular momentum is this now uh, we know the relationship between torque and uh, angular momentum okay torque is equal to uh, rate of change of angular momentum okay then let us take the z component z component of torque is rate of change of z component of angular momentum so if we substitute this uh, instead of z component of angular momentum let us substitute i omega okay so here uh, the axis of rotation is um, at rest right so <coughs> the moment of inertia is a constant so we can take this uh, i outside therefore we get i outside the derivative so i into um, okay i is the moment of inertia of the body about the axis of rotation right um, so even if the axis of rotation is uh, undergoing translation moment of inertia of the body about its uh, axis will be the same okay so i is always a constant for a body so we can take it outside for a rigid body so we can take it outside so d by dt of omega and this term d by dt of omega is the rate of change of angular velocity of the body let us call it angular acceleration Okay, so this is equal to i into alpha, where alpha is d by dt of omega, and uh, this is called angular acceleration. Angular rate of change of angular velocity. Okay, that is called angular acceleration. Okay. <clears throat> So um, now we can drop the suffix of this z because uh, we are always considering rotation about the z axis. So in general, we can write torque is equal to 
moment of inertia times angular acceleration okay we can say that this is the um, equation of motion uh, for pure rotation okay since axis remains uh, stationary we can assume that this axis is z axis so in, in general for pure rotation we can say that torque is equal to um, moment of inertia times angular acceleration okay now um, let us consider an illustration of this uh, equation of motion um, we i have uh, assigned an exercise to you uh, to show that uh, the torque on a body in a uniform gravitational field okay in a uniform gravitational field this is a, a, an exercise uh, and a, a solved problem in the textbook so uh, i have assigned it as an exercise to you also um, so this is in a uniform gravitational field the torque acting on the body you can write it as r cross w where w is the weight of the body and uh, r is the the position vector of the center of mass about the origin about the origin uh, with respect to which you are calculating the torque so r is the position vector of the center of mass and w is the weight of the body so this is the equation of torque acting on a body in a uniform gravitational field because of gravitational force because of weight so um, if we uh, use this equation uh, with the equation of motion we can write uh, r cross w is equal to i alpha okay so this shows that um, in the in a uniform gravitational field Uh, if we want to keep a body in equilibrium okay if you want to balance a body which means that uh, uh, for alpha to be zero that is angular acceleration to be zero that's when the body is in um, balance or equilibrium okay uh, there can be angular velocity but there is no rate of change of angular velocity angular acceleration is zero Uh, that means angular velocity will be constant so it will be undergoing a uniform motion uniform rotation uniform rotation motion so in order to uh, balance the body what is the possibility in, in here for alpha to be zero from this uh, equation it's clear that only possibility is uh, r is equal to zero the position vector of the center of mass about the origin should be zero in other words this means that origin should be at center of mass okay in other this shows that uh, in order to uh, attain um, equilibrium okay uh, a dynamic equilibrium for a body um, for a rotating body in a uniform gravitational field uh, what we can do is uh, in order to make this angular acceleration zero uh what we can do is uh, the possibility is that the origin should be at the center of mass in other words we can balance the body about its center of mass so this is very clear when we when, when we consider rotating disc for example in order to keep it rotating about with a uniform acceleration what we have to do is the axis of rotation should be um the center of mass okay then uh, it will be undergoing acceleration um, uniform um, angular velocity will remain constant right um another way if the axis of rotation is different from the center of mass it will uh, wobble around this uh, uh, axis of rotation so the direction of angular velocity its magnitude also will change okay that means there will be angular acceleration okay so this is an illustration of this equation of motion that we have written here torque is i times alpha and uh, this is similar to uh, in translational motion uh, this equation is quite similar to force is equal to mass into acceleration okay this is in translational motion and here what we have got is torque is equal to i into alpha 
So torque is playing the same role as that of force and uh, moment of inertia is playing the same role as of mass. Angular acceleration is playing the same role as of linear acceleration. So there is perfect analogy between rotational motion and uh, translational motion. And uh, in this context, let us try to write the uh, kinetic energy of a rotating body. Okay, we can start with uh, this equation. Kinetic energy is equal to, let's say the body, rigid body undergoing rotation is composed of uh, many particles. So, the kinetic energy is the sum of kinetic energy of each particle. Okay. So, mj, vj square, where mj is the mass of the j particle and vj is the speed of the j particle. It's undergoing rotational motion. Uh, some rigid body is undergoing rotational motion. So, when it undergoes a rotational motion, we can say that uh, this Vj, you can write as this we have written before, rho j, which is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation into omega, angular velocity. Okay. So, Vj is rho j into omega, therefore Vj square is rho j into omega square. So, if we expand this, half, uh, sorry, here it is summation. sum over j half mj rho j square w square omega square okay and here uh, since it is a, a rigid body um, undergoing uniform rotation omega is a constant so uh, this sum over j half mj rho j square this is equal to moment of inertia of the body so we can write this as uh, sorry, uh, the, in, we have to take this half outside. Uh, I can rewrite this as half into summation over j mj rho j square omega square. This is half summation over j mj rho j square is nothing but moment of inertia, total moment of inertia of the body. So we can write kinetic energy is equal to half i omega square. Okay. So, I is the moment of inertia of the body about the axis of rotation and uh, omega is the angular velocity of the body. Now, this equation is quite uh, uh, analogous to the equation in, in translational motion, kinetic energy is half m v square. Okay, where m is the mass of the body and uh, v is the linear velocity of the body. As an example of uh, pure rotation, let us consider this problem. Add puts machine with a massive pulley and uh, we want to calculate uh, the acceleration of this um, mass, masses M1 and M2. Um, you have done this problem in um, the unit uh, Newton's laws of motion, but there we did not uh, consider the mass of the pulley. We just assumed that uh, the mass of the pulley is negligibly small compared to the two masses being pulled. Okay, M1 and M2. So, um, when we consider the mass of the pulley, then uh, naturally we have to include the effect of the mass of the pulley in the acceleration. Okay, the expression for the acceleration will be different. So, how do we do this? Let us uh, look at this problem. Uh, <clears throat> so, here uh, there are two masses, M1 and M2. Uh, let us say M1 is greater than M2, so M1 is moving down, M2 is moving up with the acceleration A and the pulley is uh, having a mass MP, P4 pulley, MP and its radius is R and it is undergoing an angular acceleration alpha. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, we have to uh, draw the force diagrams of the two masses and the force diagram on the pulley also because we have to take into consideration the rotation of the pulley also. So, uh, when we consider the two masses, let us say M1, mass M1, uh, what are the forces acting on this mass? Its weight is acting downward, let us say W1, which is M1G, and the tension of the string is acting uh, upward, Let's call it T1. 
and uh, this mass is uh, coming down with an acceleration a and the second mass m2 its weight is downward w2 is m2 times g and uh, here also the tension is there acting upwards tension of the string and uh, this mass is uh, moving up with an acceleration a okay and uh, let's consider the uh, this pulley also this is the pulley so we have to consider the forces acting on different points of the pulley in order to calculate the torque so this is the the position of the axis uh, i mean axle of the pulley okay so here what are the different forces acting on the pulley one is um, this axle is obviously at the uh, center of mass passing through the center of mass of the pulley so here at the center of mass its weight is acting downward here let us say wp weight of the pulley and uh, there is a normal reaction uh, acting upward here and at this point where uh, or at this point let us consider where m1 is in contact with the pulley um, <coughs> see uh, the pulley and string ex exert a tension t1 on m1 so according to newton's third law m1 will be exerting a tension equal and opposite force on the pulley so there is a tension t1 acting here okay look at uh, this figure for the force diagram on m1 um, here the tension of the string and string plus pulley system is acting upward okay then at this point of contact uh, m1 is exerting an equal force in the downward direction so the force exerted on the pulley by the mass m1 will be equal and opposite t1 downward in the same way um, the second mass uh, m2 is also exerting a force on the pulley in the downward direction which is t2 because uh, on the mass m2 there is uh, at this point of contact there is a there is a force acting uh, i mean m2 uh, the, the the tension acting on m2 in the upward direction is t2 so m2 is exerting an equal and opposite force t2 in the downward direction on the pulley so these are the four forces acting on the pulley okay and uh, this okay and uh, yeah these are the four forces now we can uh, write the the equations of motion uh, for the <coughs> first uh, one we can write uh, suppose the downward direction is taken as positive so w1 minus t1 equals m1 a the net force is equal to mass into acceleration okay let's call it equation one now for the second mass w2 is in downward direction t2 is in upward direction and it's negative and that's equal to mass into acceleration m2a and for the pulley we have to calculate the torque okay now uh, we need an origin for calculating the torque and remember th that in one of the previous problems um, we have um, said that uh, uh, the most convenient uh, point origin for calculating torque if we can you choose any origin but the most convenient origin is always the point where uh, maximum number of forces are acting then automatically the torque due to these forces will cancel out okay so the convenient choice here for the origin is uh, this point the the center of mass of the pulley through which the axle is uh, uh, passing through okay so the pulley is revolving about this uh, axis okay and uh, the direction of revolution we have chosen as a uh, counterclockwise direction with an uh, angular acceleration alpha okay so in the counterclockwise uh, rotation um, the angular acceleration is treated as positive okay so we need to if we choose uh, this center of mass as the origin through which uh, this axis is passing then we need to calculate only the torque due to this force t1 and torque due to the force t2 okay 
So in order to calculate this torque due to the two forces, we should know the perpendicular distance from the origin to the force and this perpendicular distance is R radius. This perpendicular distance is also R radius of the pulley. Okay. Um, so uh, what is the direction of this torque? So first let us calculate the torque due to the force T1. So what is the direction of this torque? Uh, this is the direction of, so the equation is R cross F, right? So this is the direction of a radial vector uh, from the origin, uh, from the center of mass, that is origin, to uh, the direction of the torque, the line of the force, I mean not the direction of the torque, from the origin to the line of the force T1. This is the direction of the radial vector. So R cross, R1, let's say R1 cross T1, R1 cross T1, here we have to rotate in the counterclockwise sense. So it is clear that the torque is perpendicular and outward from this page. That, that direction, that is plus that direction. Okay, and the magnitude of the torque is simply uh, force into perpendicular distance. Okay, so it is uh, T1R in the plus that direction. And what about the force due to, uh, torque due to the force T2? Again, uh, R2 cross F. The perpendicular distance is capital R, but what is the direction? This is the direction of R2. When you take the cross product, the sense of rotation from R2 to T2 is uh, clockwise. Okay, So if you use right hand rule, the thumb or the direction of the torque will be perpendicular and inward to this page. That is minus that direction, hence negative. Magnitude is force into perpendicular distance, that is T2 into R. So T1 R is in plus, plus that direction, T2 R is in minus the direction this is the net torque acting on the pulley and this is equal to i alpha because it's a pure rotation pulley is fixed so that means axis of rotation is fixed okay and um, the rotation is in counterclockwise sense so we can say that uh, alpha is also in the plus z direction okay so t1r minus t2r is equal to i alpha this is the equation of motion for the pulley, I mean for the torque of the pulley and uh, since the, um, okay, so and what about the different net forces acting on the pulley, okay, and uh, different forces acting on the pulley uh, and, and the total net force should be zero because the pulley is not undergoing any translation motion, so the net fo uh, force acting on the pulley is zero. Um, so what are the different forces? Uh, normal reaction is in the upward direction, force is, uh, I mean, uh, the weight is in the downward direction, then, yeah, minus uh, T1 is in the downward direction, T2 is in the downward direction, so this, this net uh, uh, force in the upward or downward direction is zero. This is the fourth equation, okay? Let's don't worry about uh, equation 4 because um, pulley doesn't undergo any vertical motion, does not move up or move down, it simply rotates about the fixed axis undergoing pure rotation. So fourth equation doesn't have any meaning here, I mean it, it does not contribute to the solution of the problem. So <clears throat> okay, now uh, this one more point is this uh, rope in, in my Atwood's machine, this rope is uh, uh, passing through the pulley and uh, it's uh, simply undergoing acceleration without slipping. There is no slipping, okay, of the rope. So when in such a motion, um, there is a relationship between, it's a constraint relation, there is a constraint relationship between the acceleration of the rope A and the angular acceleration of the pulley. Okay, so let us uh, write down this constraint relation. So what that that relation also we have to write down. So I will write it here. Constraint relation. Okay. This uh, is possible only if the rope is uh, undergoing acceleration without slipping. Okay. So this condition is that no slipping. So what is this constraint relation? Uh, we can say that <coughs> if we look at uh, this uh, figure, 
Acceleration, yeah. The velocity, let us write down the velocity of the rope. Equation for the velocity of the rope. Now, the velocity of the rope here, when it uh, passes through this pulley, velocity of the rope is the velocity of a point on the surface of the pulley. Okay, so because the rope is also passing over the pulley. So, velocity of the rope is same as the velocity of a point on the surface of this uh, pulley. I mean, linear velocity of a point on the surface of this pulley or tangential velocity of a point on the surface of this pulley. So, we can write um, velocity of the rope is same as vel tangential velocity of a point on the surface of this pulley. And this is equal to tangential velocity on the surface of the pulley we can write as r omega. Okay, so V is equal to R omega, where R is the radius of the pulley and uh, because it is a perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation and uh, omega is uh, the angular velocity of the pulley. Okay, now if we take a uh, uh, time derivative on both sides, okay, we can write d by dt of V is equal to R is a constant d by dt of omega. Okay, now d by dt of the derivative of V is nothing but acceleration acceleration of a point on the surface of the rope linear acceleration of a point on the surface of the rope which is also the acceleration of the uh, i mean linear acceleration of a point on the surface of the pulley which is also the acceleration of the rope so a is equal to r times d omega by dt is alpha okay let's call it equation 5 okay so acceleration of the rope is equal to radi r times radius of the pulley times angular acceleration of the pulley so this is a constraint relationship between a and alpha okay this is possible uh, in the case of motion of a uh, rope through a pulley without any slipping okay so we have got all our relations now we can uh, move on to calculate an expression for um, obtain an expression for the acceleration of this masses um, so what we can do is let us add equation 1 and 2 together Okay, so what you get is, um, we are proceeding like this, 1 plus 2. So what you get is, W1, um, I think uh, in equation 2 we have made a mistake um, because uh, here um, yeah in equation 2 we should have written w2 is in downward direction okay downward direction we have taken as positive t2 is in the upward direction um, that is negative but uh, this acceleration of the second mass is in the upward direction so we have to put a minus sign here so this is a minus minus m2a okay um, so okay that is uh, there's a an error here please so uh, rectify that okay so <clears throat> let's uh, take uh, the it's okay because of that addition negative sign it's more convenient if we uh, take the minus in subtract equation one uh, equation two from equation one so instead of 1 plus 2, let me try 1 minus 2. Okay. So we have W1 minus T1 on the left hand side. We have minus W2 plus T2. Okay. On the right side, we have M1A minus of minus will be plus M2A. Uh, so this we can combine like this w1 minus w2 let me take a minus sign outside from t1 and t2 so we get minus of t1 minus t2 equals here acceleration we can take out so m1 plus m2 into a okay now look at equation 3 from equation 3, 
I can write T1 minus T2, left hand side becomes T1 minus T2 times R. And capital R we can move to the right side. So T1 minus T2 is I alpha times I alpha divided by R. And let us substitute that uh, above. So we have uh, W1 minus W2 minus I alpha divided by R is equal to M1 plus M2 times A. Okay, now look at equation 5. Instead of alpha, we can write um, A. In terms of A, we can write. Okay, so from equation 5, we get alpha is equal to A by R. Okay, so that we can substitute here. So we have W1 minus W2 minus I A by R square is equal to M1 plus M2 times A. Okay. Now, um, our pulley is like a disc, uniform disc rotating about its uh, a perpendicular axis passing through its center of mass. So we know the equation for moment of inertia of a disc with uh, rotating about the perpendicular axis. Okay, so for a uniform disc, we assume that our pulley is like a uniform disc. For a uniform disc, moment of inertia about a perpendicular axis passing through its center of mass is half mr square. Okay, so for the pulley it is mp, mass of the pulley is mp r square. <coughs> So, if we substitute that value here, we have W1 minus W2 minus uh, half MP R square A divided by R square is equal to M1 plus M2 times A. So, R square will cancel and we can take uh, this term containing acceleration from the left, left side to the right side. So, the left hand side becomes W1 minus W2 is equal to right side is M1 plus M2 and if you take this term to the right side we have half MP into A to the right side so if you take A outside MP by 2 times A what is W1 M1 G W2 is M2 G okay so M1 minus M2 times G is equal to m1 plus m2 plus mass of the pulley divided by 2 times a therefore acceleration of the string or the two masses is m1 minus m2 times g divided by m1 plus m2 plus mass of the pulley divided by 2 this is the result Uh, previously, uh, when we did this problem in Newton's laws of motion, you can go back and uh, um, analyze it again. The result that we obtained was acceleration is equal to uh, m1 minus m2 times g divided by m1 plus m2. That was the result. There we have ignored the mass of the pulley. Okay, But uh, when we include the mass of the pulley, uh, you can notice that um, this uh, the effective mass in the expression for the effective mass, uh, the mass of the pulley appears, but only half of the mass of the pulley appears. Okay. So, uh, the contribution of the pulley to the equation. So, uh, the acceleration will be less when we consider the mass of the pulley, but the total mass of the pulley does not contribute to the effective mass. Only half of the mass of the pulley contributes to the effective mass. So, this is the expression for the acceleration of the Atwood's machine setup when we take into account the mass of the pulley okay so for that we have used the idea of the dynamics of particularly in equation 3 we have used the dynamics of um, pure rotation okay this is an example where the system is undergoing pure rotation rotation about a, an axis which is at rest okay